Hello summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Crumbs and I'm here with our 1223 low elo tier list. Our regular tier list which we post with the patch rundown and mid patch updates is aimed at around the high gold to platinum skill level. This one covers everything below that. Obviously any tier list is a bit nuanced, but in general this is a great way to know what champions to pick and which to avoid to instantly give you a better shot at winning your solo queue games. Before we get to the tier list, I just want to take a minute to remind you that while meta videos and other content are a great way to pick up some quick tips, if you're super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top level players and they're available 24 seven. So it's always a good time to stop by. And for just $7.99 a month, you can take your pro guides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our coaches and bootcamp content and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it's worth every penny. Now onto the tier list. First, we'll start off with our top laners. Even after being hit with some decent nerfs on the B patch, Dr. Mundo is still going very strong. In fact, his win rate actually went up a tiny fraction of a percent. He'll remain in the OP tier, and even here, among the best picks in the role, he's the clear-cut best. We'll be moving Scion down to the S tier. Remember our placement on Scion on this list is assuming you're playing him as a tank since that is optimal for him. If you're going AD, you may as well consider him a C or D tier champion. Fiora has surpassed our expectations. We thought the Hydra nerfs on the 1223 main patch would be enough to drop her to the A tier, but even after the B patch's second round of nerfs, she's still a super strong pick. We're moving her up a notch to the S tier. Heimerdinger also moves up to the S tier. He's one of the few mage picks that actually does well when dealing with tankier foes since he has consistent DPS with his turrets and can build the Andres and Demonic Embrace to melt them. Prior to this patch, Zac was consistently useful, but his carry potential was limited. The buffs he got have helped quite a bit in that regard. He'll be moving up to the S tier for now. Urgot gets a bit of a surprising demotion to the A tier. You'd think he'd be super strong right now since he's such a powerful tank buster, but the issue is his slow startup. Even the tanks and juggernauts that he shreds later can bully him early game and sometimes he ends up never coming online before the game is over. He's just a bit too inconsistent to be in the upper tiers. Timo drops down to the A tier. He can be annoying to deal with early game, but the popular meta picks are not auto attackers that you can shut down all game long. He gets outscaled pretty quickly by tanks and juggernauts that itemize into heavy MR, so if you don't snowball super hard and close out the game fast, he just isn't great. Lilia drops down to the B tier. After the pretty big nerf to her Q, you really only want to pick her as a counter in certain matchups. Even then, her ability to carry fights out of a lane is quite a bit lower, and I'd recommend an AP carry that does a bit more late game. The last couple of nerfs Trundle has received have made him borderline unviable as a top laner. Yeah, he does a decent job against tanks, but other picks do it much better. We're dropping him down to the C tier. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Ramis had a huge spike in performance this patch, and even after the B patch nerfs he got, he's still looking really good. He's easily one of the best junglers in the game, especially for lower ranks, so we're moving him up to the OP tier. Amumu has no doubt been one of Riot's favorite champions the past year and a half. Ever since they gave him two charges of bandage toss, he's been either good or great almost every patch. And the few times he started doing not so hot, they almost immediately give him some type of buff that pushes him right back up to being broken. We'll be moving him up to the OP tier. Maokai also moves up to the OP tier. He is another one of Riot's favorite champions to coddle. They've repeatedly made changes that make him broken as a support for the past couple of years in one way or another, and then a few months back, they took it even further. They gave him that revamp that made him a broken 3 roll flex pick. Obviously, this needed to be nerfed, but for some reason, they went back on that and buffed him back to back on 1222 and 1223. Maybe the first set of buffs were needed, but the second definitely were not. Maokai was already doing very well when building the right mythics towards the end of patch 1222, and now he's just absolutely broken. 
Vi got no direct changes to this patch, but she still spiked hard in performance, so she gets a promotion to the OP tier. The main reason she's doing so well is her ability to naturally smash through tanks and juggernauts that we're seeing so much of now. Her W shreds armor and deals percent HP damage. On top of that, she naturally itemizes into Divine Sunderer and Black Cleaver. For those exact same reasons, Warwick also moves up to the OP tier. Tanks stand absolutely no chance against him. The only counter to Warwick is bursting him down fast or shredding him with super high DPS. Tanks are more about slow burn damage, but Warwick heals right through that with his Q and passive. He also rushes Blade of the Ruined King, and while he normally goes Jack Show, he can also swap that to Divine Sunderer to especially deal with beefy foes if he needs to. Zack's buffs this patch have made a huge difference in the jungle, taking him from being basically an unviable pick to a super reliable one that can engage fights and carry games. Of all the tanks, Zack is definitely one of the higher damage ones. Between his W, Sunfire Aegis and Demonic Embrace, Zack's DPS is closer to that of a juggernaut than of a tank. The only thing keeping him from being in the OP tier right now is his slow startup, so we'll plop him in the S tier for now. Riot let Prowler's Claw Udir be so OP for a bit too long, but finally they reeled it back in with this B patch. It's still viable, but with the tuning he got, you actually need to get a lead early and snowball to pull it off, rather than just spiking for free at two items and just one-shotting everyone you look at when behind. Normally, Trundle would be thriving in such a meta that's so heavily dominated by tanks and juggernauts, but the nerfs he got have sort of neutralized that a bit. He's still a good counterpick to tanks, but his upper ceiling for carrying has been lowered enough that we can only put him as high as the A tier. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. Kale is loving the tank meta and moves up to the OP tier as a mid laner. It does mean giving up some early game agency, but it is well worth it considering how well she does in later fights. Fizz has been doing really well again, so we're moving him up to the S tier. A lot of assassins struggle when there's so many beefy champions being played, but due to his slippery nature, Fizz is pretty much unfazed. Malphite is almost always a B tier pick for us because it's typically a really situational pick. You'd usually only pick him as a counter to melee champions, but right now he's doing well in almost all matchups, so we're moving him up to the S tier. The only bad lane to worry about is Silas. He beats you at all stages, and you're giving him a really good ultimate to steal. Ban him out, and you're golden. Karma is an easy to play lane bully, but she tends to fall off super hard out of lane, so we usually place her pretty low on our tier list. But the new Radiant Virtue build makes her super strong in the mid lane, so we'll be moving her all the way up to the S tier. Just death ball after laning phase and profit. Cassidy has become really strong after his buffs, but he's more of a champion that shines in the upper ranks. He's good in low elo too, but only enough to make the A tier. Ari moves up to the B tier. She's just in a very mid place right now. If you snowball early, she can make some plays, but she's not strong enough to totally run away with the game. Annie gets moved down to the B tier. Being a burst mage in the tank meta means it's kinda tough to make those big game winning flash ult plays that Annie is known for. After months of being disgustingly OP, Zed has finally received the nerfs he deserves. Honestly, I am surprised they hit him so hard. The nerfs seem kind of small, but he's fallen off so hard that we're dropping him all the way to the C tier. I guess you also have to factor in that it's not just the nerfs he received, but also all the tankier champions being picked that make it harder for him to find a target in fights. Now, let's move things down to the bot lane. Karthus moves up to the OP tier. The one counter to Karthus is fighting from range. Both his Q and E are short ranged abilities, so he doesn't do well when fights are more about kiting and moving around. The more all in style of fighting associated with tank metas, which we're obviously in now, works heavily in his favor. Much like Karthus, Samira is another champion that does way better when both teams are just clashing into each other rather than kiting back and forth, so she's moving up to the OP tier. Even if she doesn't shred tanks super fast like she does squishier opponents, they also don't really pose much of a threat to her either. You can just build a good amount of lifesteal and LDR and basically use tanks as health batteries. 
Veigar is a pretty strong bot laner, but a lot of opponents in other roles in the current meta give him some issues. When it's other squishy champions, he can just blow them up, but tanks and juggernauts aren't so easy to one-shot. He's still good, but you cannot absolutely hard carry most games on your own, so we're moving him down to the A tier. Vayne moves up to the B tier. It's surprising that she isn't doing a lot better, given that she's always been considered the counter to tanks, but she's always sort of mid in solo queue. And it's not just an issue with mechanics in lower ranks, even in high elo, she's underperforming. Finishing things off, we've got our supports. Amumu will be moving up to the OP tier. With some buffs aimed at making him a better jungler on 1223, he of course inadvertently got turned into a better support. That little bit of extra HP per level goes a long way when you're on a support's budget. Not being blown up quite as fast in teamfights means you may live long enough to get off an extra stun, which can make all the difference. Like Amumu, buffs aimed at Maokai's role as a top end jungle have made him much better at support. He moves up to the S tier, but if you're really good at looking for roams efficiently, then you could consider him OP. But wait, there's more! Zac is yet another champion who got buffs for other roles and also became super strong again as a support. We'll be moving him up to the S tier. While the buffs weren't huge, like I said with Amumu, a little bit of tankiness and damage can go a long way for supports. The extra damage on his Q can help add just enough to finish off foes in all ins bot lane, while the extra healing on his passive really adds up for those later game fights, where even tanky supports tend to get blown up quickly. Renata also gets promoted to the S tier. With so many tanks and juggernauts becoming more powerful this patch, a lot of team fights are just forced head on. This style of fighting works perfectly for Renata. If the enemy team is funneling in to follow up on their frontliners engage, you can find some very easy ults to turn the fight around in your team's favor. With the tank meta comes more extended fights and that's exactly where Swain thrives. Even as a support, he can pump out serious damage in longer battles, so we're moving him up to the S tier. And that about wraps things up for our 1223B low elo tier list. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Since making this list involves going over all the champions in all the roles, I'm sure we overlooked a pick here or there, so feel free to let us know if you think we missed something down in the comment section below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until then, good luck on the rift, and may the LP God smile down upon you.